The peaceful Claxian screamed as the brutal Zorax warriors beat them mercilessly, splattering purple blood across the grimy cantina floor while demanding their protection money. The other aliens in the bar averted their eyes, too terrified to step in and help the helpless merchants. Nobody dared oppose the Zorax on Lawless Nexus 9. Except for one human. Juno, a timid Brunali, watched in amazement as the Terran named Scott strode right up to the Zorax leader and ordered him to stand down. The huge thugs laughed in disbelief at this puny creature's audacity. Scott just smiled, then moved in a blur, disarming the nearest Zorax and taking down two more with lightning-fast strikes. The brute snarled and pulled a crackling plasma knife, but Scott kicked it from his grip and put him on the ground with one devastating blow. The Zorax gang scrambled to flee, dragging their fallen comrades. Scott helped the battered Claxians to their feet, made sure they were all right, then walked out without a word. Juno hurried after the human, catching up to him outside the bar. He introduced himself and gushed about how his people admired humanity's bravery in defending the innocent, no matter the odds. Juno's own race were strict pacifists, helpless against such cruelty. Scott just shrugged and said standing up to bullies was the right thing to do. Suddenly, a deafening explosion shook the spaceport. Civilians screamed and ran as flames engulfed a docking bay. Scott sprinted towards the blast to help while a hesitant Juno followed. They found a mortally wounded Claxian in the rubble who gasped out with his final breath that this was retaliation for the humans interfering with Zorax operations. Scott's eyes hardened. He told Juno this spaceport was critical for the Zorax crime syndicate brutally expanding across the sector. The Galactic Council was powerless to stop them, compromised by bribes and threats. Scott vowed to end their reign of terror himself. Juno protested that fighting the Zorax directly was suicide. Their weapons and criminal empire made them too strong. No one challenged them and lived. But Scott just gave him a flinty smile. Looks like it's time for us humans to step up and clean out these scumbags then. And I know just the team to call in. The Zorax want to take on humanity? They're going to regret it. Scott wasted no time after his declaration. As Juno watched in amazement, the human pulled out a compact communicator and sent an encrypted burst transmission. Within moments, replies pinged back. A feral grin spread across Scott's face. The gang's all in. Let's pay these Zorax bastards a house call they won't forget. Two days later, a nondescript freighter touched down in a remote corner of the Nexus 9 spaceport. The ragtag assortment of humans who sauntered down the cargo ramp looked nothing like an elite military unit, but Juno could immediately tell these were hard-bitten warriors. There was Mike, a mountain of a man lugging a duffel bag that clanked with the sound of heavy ordnance. He gave Scott a bone-crushing handshake chuckling about bringing the good stuff. Next came Finn, a lanky daredevil with a reckless glint in his eye, twirling a vibro knife between nimble fingers. He traded the elaborate fist bump with Scott, crowing about their devilishly handsome squad being back in action. Kirby emerged next, a slight figure nearly swallowed by the heavy tactical rig dripping with all manner of gadgets and computer gear. He flashed Scott a sly wink, Data pad already out and fingers flying across the haptic keys. Last was Diego, a lithe shadow of a man who moved with a silent grace that screamed danger. He clasped arms with Scott, dark eyes gleaming with anticipation for the mission ahead. In a dingy back room of the spaceport, Scott laid out the plan. Their first strike would be on the linchpin of the Zorax's military might, a secret munitions depot nestled deep in the jungles of Verdania, where the syndicate stockpiled the illegal heavy weapons it used to unleash bloody mayhem across the sector. Kirby had already sliced into the Zorax systems to pinpoint the base's hidden location. Diego outlined an infiltration route to neutralize the perimeter guards and crack the armory's security. Mike ran some quick calculations on his demo charges, guaranteeing a big enough bang to vaporize the entire weapons cache. Finn charted their approach vector to the jungle LZ, smirking at the thought of any Zorax fighters foolish enough to tangle with him for air supremacy. As dusk fell over Verdania, the team's matte black dropship knifed through the thick jungle canopy, 
flaring to a hover just meters above the forest floor. Scott, Mike, Kirby, and Diego fast roped down into the humid darkness, fanning out towards the depot perimeter as Finn lifted away to circle back for the extraction. Diego flitted through the underbrush, ancient instincts making him one with the shadows as he closed on the outer guard posts. In a flurry of chokeholds and trank darts, he left a trail of unconscious Zorax in his wake. Keyword, stealth. Kirby followed in his footsteps, fingers flying over a mobile uplink as he wormed through the base's security nets. With a final tap, the outer gates clicked open and the lights winked out across the compound. The Zorax were blind and deaf to the human ghosts slipping among them. Keyword, hacking. But even the best plans hit snags, and this one came in the form of a roving Zorax patrol that stumbled right into Scott and Mike rigging the main munitions vault with high explosives. Mike rose to his full height with a resigned sigh, throwing off his tactical cloak and unslinging a rotary mass driver from his back. Time to get loud, boys! The night erupted in a storm of tracers and energy bolts as the humans went back to back their combat instincts and bleeding-edge armor keeping them one step ahead of the Zorax fusillade. Scott barked target priorities as he snapped off shots with preternatural speed. Keyword, soldiering. Mike braced his cannon, a snarl on his lips, as he hosed a sustained stream of gravity-sheathed slugs into the onrushing Zorax squad. Keyword, DACA. Kirby Diego, finish the demo. We'll hold them off. Scott calmed, dropping a hulking Zorax trooper with a deft headshot. As their squad mates fought a furious fighting retreat back to the extraction point, Diego and Kirby worked with manic focus, running DT cord and programming trigger sequences. With a final keystroke, the charges were set. Finn, we're Oscar Mike. Bring the bus around. Scott called into his headset as the humans fell back by leapfrogging cover downing the dogged Zorax pursuers with pinpoint fire. The sleek, blocky shape of their dropship whirled in overhead just as the humans broke from the tree line, hatch yawning open as Finn coaxed the nimble craft into a daredevil hover mere feet off the ground. Scott and Mike piled in, still spraying, suppressing fire. Diego dove through the hatch with a roll, Kirby hot on his heels lugging the detonator. Blow it! Scott roared as the hatch sealed and Finn boosted for the stratosphere. Kirby stabbed the ignition key with a flourish. Behind them, a miniature sun bloomed over the jungle as the Zorax munitions depot disintegrated in an explosive chain reaction that shook the night. The shockwave buffeted the accelerating dropship, eliciting a maniac whoop of joy from Finn. Mike summed up all their thoughts as he watched the towering fireball recede into the distance. Now that's how you tell those Zorax bitches that the humans are done playing around. Word of the daring raid spread like wildfire through the downtrodden civilizations languishing under the Zorax yoke. For the first time in generations, the flicker of hope began to awaken as the story was whispered in every dingy cantina and smoky back room. Someone was fighting back against the syndicate's cruel reign, and not just anyone, but the legendary humans and their indomitable warrior spirit. Emboldened resistance cells reached out from a dozen worlds with offers of assistance, smuggled weapons, intel on Zorax operations, access to safe houses and supply caches. The criminal empire's facade of invulnerability had been shattered by Scott's team, and the sector's oppressed masses stirred with thoughts of rebellion. But the Zorax were far from defeated. From his flagship, an obsidian blade jam packed with weapon batteries that hung in the void over the syndicate's throne world of Brazax, Emperor Kazak seethed with unbound rage at the news of the human strike. The warlord's clawed fists clenched bloodlessly around the arms of his command throne as he stormed onto the bridge, all pretense of civility discarded, leaving only the brutal killer that had clawed his way to the top of the criminal empire's bloody hierarchy. I want bounties posted across the entire sector for these humans, Kazak snarled at his assembled underbosses and intelligence chiefs. Bankrupt our coffers if you have to. I want their tongues decorating my trophy room within a cycle. And send out the claw. Kazak's elite cadre of gene-boosted killers, 
fanatically loyal to him and armed with the best weapons blood money could buy. Even the hardened Zorax officers felt a shiver of fear at the mention of the notorious hunters. These humans want a war? Kazak hissed, a cruel sneer on his craggy face. Then we will drown the stars in their blood until the message is clear. None defy the Zorax and live. But Scott and his team met the Syndicate's escalating brutality with grim drive, embarking on a series of damaging raids that shook the Zorax power structure to its core. On a frozen moon, the humans infiltrated a hidden drug lab churning out the vicious combat stims that kept the Zorax foot soldiers fighting past the limits of sanity. Mike and Finn stormed the reinforced bunker, using the Syndicate's own chem bombs to poison the drug vats before blasting their way out on plumes of ice and fire. At a bleak asteroid base, known only to the Zorax elite as Outpost Zeta-9, Diego and Kirby sliced into a trafficking operation that funneled slaves to the Syndicate's gladiator pits and flesh circuses. As Scott and Mike placed pinpoint shots on the overseers with mass driver sniper rifles, the infiltrators sabotaged the base's life support and gravity controls. The slavers tumbled through the air, choking and clutching at their throats as their prisoners scurried to freedom in stolen shuttles. On a gaudy casino station, where garishly bioluminescent aliens frittered away their meager earnings at rigged games under the leering eyes of Zorax enforcers, the humans broke the bank in a daring smash and grab. Scott, Mike, and Diego laid down a hail of covering fire in the garish main gambling hall, sending patrons diving for cover under a blizzard of smashed hollow screens and grav tables. Kirby and Finn raided the vault, scooping wads of untraceable credits into duffel bags before blasting off in the station manager's gleaming private yacht. The Zorax grew increasingly desperate as Scott's team ran wild, the once cowed population surging into open rebellion on a dozen worlds as the Syndicate's aura of invincibility crumbled. Even the Claw Guard's brutal crackdowns could only slow the turning tide. But the warlords still had fangs, and they sank them deep when the humans staged an ambush on a Zorax convoy thought to be shipping contraband weapons to an embattled Imperial garrison. The team hit the convoy like a meteor, Mike and Scott shredding transports with rockets and plasma fire while Finn strafed from above. The humans were just mopping up when an urgent shout came over the comms from Diego, scouting ahead. It's a trap! The claw! A crackling beam of dark energy slashed across the night sky from a distant ridgeline, catching the dropship dead center. The craft lurched sickeningly as a molten hole was punched clean through the engine block. Finn wrestled with the controls, teeth gritted as warning klaxons blared. We're going down! Brace for impact! The stricken ship careened into the barren hills in a plume of dust and debris. Scott dragged a coughing Kirby from the wreckage as Diego and Mike laid down suppressing fire at the distant muzzle flashes. Finn popped the cockpit hatch, wiping blood from a gash on his forehead. Power plant slag, we ain't flying out of here. Scott gazed into the starlit sky as more drop pods streaked through the atmosphere, disgorging squads of giant armored forms on pillars of fire. The guttural hunting horns of the Claw Guard echoed off the hills. He turned to his team with fire in his eyes. This is where we hold them. This is where we fight. This is where they die. Mike handed him a battle rifle with a predatory grin. Damn straight. Let's show these bastards what it means to corner humanity. The humans. Scott gritted his teeth as he watched the Zorax assault wave break against their hastily fortified position. Plasma bolts sizzled overhead, scorching the rocky outcropping they'd claimed as a temporary sanctuary. The air reeked of ozone and burning metal. Status report, he barked into his comms. Mike's voice crackled back, punctuated by the rhythmic thud of his heavy cannon. Holding the line, but these bastards just keep coming. Finn, how's our ride looking? A string of colorful curses preceded the pilot's response. Engines are fried. Shield emitters are toast. I'm working as fast as I can, but we ain't flying out of here anytime soon. Scott's mind raced. They needed an exit strategy, and fast. The claw guard wouldn't be far behind. Diego, scout ahead. Find us a better defensive position. 
The team's infiltration specialist melted into the shadows without a word. Long minutes ticked by as the humans weathered the Zorax assault. Finally, Diego's voice cut through the din of battle. There's a ravine about a click east. Deep walls, natural choke points. But I've got eyes on Zorax reinforcements inbound from the north. Scott nodded grimly. All right, team, listen up. We're going to fall back to that ravine. Mike, rig up some surprises for our friends. Kirby, work your magic on their comms. Juno, see what you can cobble together from the ship's systems for some portable cover. The team sprang into action. Mike laid a deadly gauntlet of improvised explosives, cackling as he wired detonators. Kirby's fingers danced across his data pad, injecting false intel into Zorax channels. Juno cannibalized the dropship's remaining systems, jury-rigging makeshift force field projectors. They barely made it to the ravine before the sky filled with Zorax dropships. Heavily armed bounty hunters poured from the vessels, their war cries echoing off the canyon walls. The humans dug in, ready for a fight. Diego's sniper rifle cracked, dropping Zorax with surgical precision. Mike unleashed hell with his heavy weapons, turning the ravine entrance into a killing field. But there were too many. Inch by blood-soaked inch, the humans were pushed back. Scott fired his battle rifle until the heat sinks glowed cherry red. He watched in dismay as their ammo counters dwindled and their defensive positions crumbled. Just as hope began to fade, the wind picked up. A howling sandstorm engulfed the battlefield. Visibility plummeted to zero. The Zorax aerial assault faltered, unable to navigate the maelstrom. Now's our chance, Scott roared. Push them back! The humans surged forward, Scott leading the charge. In the swirling chaos, their superior close-quarters combat training gave them the edge. Zorax fell to precise strikes and brutal grapples, their ranged weapons next to useless in the melee. Juno's voice cut through the comms. This way! Follow me! The desert-savvy tech led them through the storm, outflanking the Zorax positions. Up and down the ravine, desperate hand-to-hand -hand battles raged. Human fists and knives found chinks in Zorak's armor. The tide was turning. A chilling warhorn cut through the wind. Scott's blood ran cold as he saw them. The claw guard. Hulking figures in night black armor strode through the chaos, crackling energy lances carving bloody swathes through friend and foe alike. Finn, tell me you've got that ship working. Engines are hot, but we need more time. Scott squared his shoulders locking eyes with the claw guard leader. Then I'll buy us some. Come on, you ugly son of a bitch. Let's dance. The two warriors clashed in a fury of strikes. Scott's martial arts prowess was pushed to the limit against the guard's superhuman strength and dark energy weapons. But as the battle raged on, Scott found the patterns in the chaos. With a lightning-fast combination of strikes, he shattered the claw guard's defenses and landed a crushing blow. The Zorax ranks, seeing their elite vanguard fall, broke, and fled into the storm. Scott stumbled back to the dropship, bloodied but victorious. The team piled in as Finn fired up the engines. Let's get the hell out of here before more of them show up, Scott growled. The battered dropship clawed its way into orbit, leaving the humiliated Zorax forces in their wake. Another impossible victory for the humans who refused to know when they were beaten. Scott leaned back in his chair a rare grin spreading across his face as the team celebrated their narrow escape from the desert world. The dropship hummed with excited chatter and the clinking of bottles. Here's to kicking Zorak's ass and living to tell about it, Mike bellowed, raising his drink. But the revelry was cut short as Kirby burst into the common area, data pad in hand. We got something big. Resistance cells just sent us intel on a secret Zorax listening post. This place is monitoring comms across the whole sector. The mood in the ship instantly shifted. Scott leaned forward, all business. What kind of intel are we talking about? Kirby's fingers flew across the screen. If the Zorax can track resistance movements, vulnerable worlds, Kazak could crush the rebellion before it even starts. Then we take it out, Scott said, his voice hard as steel. Finn, plot a course. We're going hunting. Hours later, the team's dropship hung in the void, cloaked and silent, as they assessed the listening post. 
The facility was a hulking monstrosity of metal and energy shields, jam-packed with weapons. Kirby's hands danced across his console, injecting Viri and exploits into the base's cyber defenses. I'm in their systems. Finn, you've got a clear approach vector. The pilot nodded, easing the ship forward. They slipped past the outer sensors, gliding through a gap in the patrol patterns. With a soft thud, they touched down inside the facility's towering walls. Diego took point as they exited the ship, moving like a ghost through the shadows. One by one, Zorak's guards dropped silently as the infiltrator cleared a path. The team followed in his wake, mapping the labyrinthine structure. Central hub should be two levels up, Kirby whispered, consulting his hacked schematics. They were nearly there when a blood-curdling shriek of servos and hydraulics filled the air. Scott spun to see a nightmarish shape lumbering out of the darkness, a hulking automaton, its metal frame overflowing with weapons. Security bots, Mike yelled, opening fire. The corridor erupted into chaos. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as more automata converged on their position. The team scrambled for cover, forced to retreat down cramped maintenance shafts and catwalks. These things don't go down easy, Juno shouted his tech skills straining to disrupt the machine's targeting systems. Mike hefted a grenade launcher, a manic grin on his face. Let's see how they like this. The explosion rocked the facility, shredding the lead automaton. But more kept coming. The humans fought tooth and nail through the metal gauntlet, Mike's ordnance proving crucial in clearing a path. By the time they reached the comm hub's blast doors, the team was battered and bleeding. Kirby's fingers flew across the locking mechanism as the last automaton bore down on them. Got it, he yelled as the door slid open. They tumbled inside, sealing the entrance behind them. Scott surveyed the cavernous room, packed with servers and holographic displays. His eyes widened as he saw the atmospheric controls. It's rigged to vent if we try to access anything, he growled. We can't get the data. Juno nodded grimly. Then we bring it all down. We can trigger a reactor overload, turn this whole place into a smoking crater. Do it, Scott ordered. Mike, prep some warning beacons for the fallout zone. We're not here to hurt civilians. As Juno and Kirby raced to the reactor controls, alarms blared throughout the facility. Zorak's security forces swarmed towards the hub. Looks like we've got company, Finn's voice crackled over the comms. I'll keep them busy topside. The sounds of strafing runs and explosions filtered down as the team fortified their position. Wave after wave of Zorax troops threw themselves at the humans' defenses. Reactor's nearly critical, Juno shouted over the din of battle. We need to... His words were cut off as a dark shape materialized behind him. A claw guard assassin. Energy blade humming to life. Scott didn't hesitate. He hurled himself at the elite warrior deflecting the killing blow meant for Juno. The two combatants clashed in a furious duel, Scott's reflexes pushed to their limits. With a final, desperate move, Scott fainted left and struck true. The claw guard stumbled, giving Scott the opening to land a crushing blow. We're out of time, Kirby yelled. This place is going to blow! They sprinted for the exit, the facility shaking itself apart around them. They dove into the waiting dropship seconds before the reactor detonated in apocalyptic fury. The blast wave buffeted their ship as Finn punched the throttle. As the blinding flash faded, they looked back at a scene of utter devastation. The listening post was nothing but a smoking crater. Scott gazed out at the destruction, his face grim but satisfied. One more blow against Kazak and his thugs. We keep this up and the Zorax are going to learn to fear the name Human. The acrid stench of burning circuits filled the dropship as Scott and his team caught their breath. Their victory over the Zorax listening post had come at a steep cost. The ship's system sparked and sputtered, barely holding together. Kirby's voice cut through the tense silence. Incoming transmission. Encrypted channel. Scott nodded, his face etched with exhaustion. Put it through. A garbled voice crackled over the comms. Human resistance. Kazakh stronghold. Mornak. This is your chance. 
The team exchanged glances. Mike leaned forward, eyes gleaming. Kazak himself? Now that's a target worth dying for. Scott studied the data scrolling across his display. Mornak. A hellscape of volcanic fury and toxic atmosphere. The perfect lair for a crime lord. Juno, Scott barked. You're up. Intel says there's a weak point in the mine security. Get in there and disable that grid. Juno nodded, face grim. Hours later, cloaked in the acrid mists of Mornak, he slipped past Zorak's patrols. The sulfuric mines loomed before him, a marvel of brutalist architecture carved into the volcanic rock. Inside, the air rang with the clang of pickaxes and the groans of exhausted laborers. Juno's heart clenched at the sight of emaciated bodies, alien races from across the sector toiling under the watchful eyes of Zorak's overseers. He crept through maintenance tunnels, bypassing security checkpoints with stolen credentials. Finally, he reached the central control hub. His fingers flew across alien interfaces, planting viruses and disabling fail-safes. Grids down, Juno whispered into his comm. You're clear, Finn. The dropship glided silently through Mornak's turbulent skies, cloaking field barely holding against the corrosive atmosphere. Finn's hands danced across the controls, guiding them through a maze of defensive emplacements now rendered blind. They touched down in a secluded cargo bay. Diego stepped out first, his features obscured by holographic camouflage. He gestured to the others. Showtime. Remember, we're slave traders here to see the big man himself. The team marched through opulent corridors, their disguises holding up under the scrutiny of Zorak's guards. Finally, they were ushered into a cavernous throne room. Kazak reclined on a massive obsidian seat, his reptilian features twisted in a sneer. More flesh for the mines? You're either brave or foolish to come here personally. Scott met the crime lord's gaze. We have special merchandise. Kazak's eyes narrowed. In that moment, the ruse shattered. Intruders! Kazak roared, leaping to his feet. The room erupted into chaos. Mike's planted charges detonated, bringing down support pillars and crushing Zorak's troops. Scott lunged for Kazak, but the crime lord was already fleeing deeper into the citadel. Alarms blared. Kazak's voice echoed through hidden speakers. Initiate purge protocol. Better the slaves die than my secrets fall into enemy hands. Noxious green gas began seeping from vents. Scott's team donned rebreathers, but they knew time was against them. Finn! Scott shouted into his comm. Get Juno and as many slaves out as you can. We'll handle Kazak. The citadel became a maze of death. Diego and Mike held choke points against waves of clawed guard, their weapons blazing. Kirby furiously hacked terminals, trying to override the lockdown. Scott pursued Kazak through winding corridors. The two collided in a darkened chamber, trading furious blows. Kazak fought with the desperation of a cornered animal, his claws raking Scott's armor. You think you can stop me? Kazak snarled. I am the lifeblood of this sector. Scott's fist connected with Kazak's jaw. You're a parasite, and we're the cure. The duel raged on, neither opponent giving ground. Scott's combat training clashed against Kazak's alien physiology and dirty fighting style. Just as Scott gained the upper hand, Kirby's voice crackled through the comms. Lockdown lifted, but we've got bigger problems. This whole place is coming down. Kazak laughed, blood staining his teeth. If I can't have it, no one will. The citadel shook violently. Scott staggered as the floor beneath him buckled. Through shattered windows, he saw Mornak's surface fracturing rivers of magma bursting forth. Everyone out, Scott roared. Now! You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.